We tend to focus on the warrior aspect of the samurai, but we must not forget that there were also politicians and business managers. Zen was the best way to acquire such a strong mentality. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. If there is one thing that all Japanese traditional cultures with Do on the end have in common, it is Zen. Zen has been practiced by Japanese samurai since ancient times and has been passed down to this day. If you are a practitioner of the Do art, I'm very sure you felt its death before. But why did samurai favor Zen so much? So today, I'll explain what Zen is in the first place, as well as its characteristics compared to other religions, and how it spread throughout Japan. I will then explain the three reasons why the samurai actively practiced Zen. By watching this video, not only will you gain a deeper understanding of the culture and history of Zen and Japanese religions, but you will also learn more about the way of the samurai. I'm sure that after watching this video, you'll want to start training in Zen yourself. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy our content. Let me begin with talking about what Zen is, its characteristics, and its history in Japan. 1. What Zen is Zen is one of the Buddhist sects that were originally born in the 6th century. The goal of Zen is to bring oneself closer to enlightenment by practicing Zazen, seated Zen meditation, a method of training said to have led Buddha to enlightenment around the 6th century BC. Zen is originally an abbreviation of Zenjo, which is one of the three Buddhist practices, and it means to focus one's mind to one thing. It may be considered as a kind of mental concentration method. This is my personal view as a practitioner of Yaido tea ceremony and other Zen related cultures, but I believe that the ultimate purpose of Zen is to train the mind to always focus on three things, present moment, the present place, and oneself. Sad and painful things will happen in life, but no matter how much we fuss or grieve, in the end, we cannot control nature or other people. All we can do is always focus on the present moment, where we stand, and ourselves. By being able to focus on these three things through Zen practices, we can get rid of unnecessary emotions and live calmly and peacefully at all times. 2. The Characteristics of Zen The main characteristics of Zen are as follows. 1. Not looking for help from others, but only from ourselves. 2. Being practical. 3. Aiming to reduce rather than increase. Some sects of Buddhism are other-oriented, in which they seek to be saved by Buddha by chanting sutras. On the other hand, Zen is self-reliant because it does not seek enlightenment by borrowing the help of others, but by practicing and striving through one's own efforts. In other words, it is not a religion that worships a specific godlike being. Also, while most Buddhist sects rely on the words of sutras to learn their teachings, Zen does not. Zen teaches that there is a limit to what can be taught in writing about the state of enlightenment, so the only way is to experience it yourself. So in a way you can say that the act of asking the question, what is Zen, is wrong in the first place. For example, it is not impossible to answer the question, what is water, with words. But in the end, it is only when you touch and drink it yourself that you can gain a deeper understanding of it. Ultimately, you must experience it yourself and gain your own understanding of what Zen is. After hearing all of this, you might have thought they have to require all sorts of things and accomplish a lot of great deeds in order to reach enlightenment through Zen. However, it's actually the opposite. As you can understand from the subtractive aesthetics that reside in the Do arts, Zen practice is about quitting, discarding, and letting go. By quitting to compare ourselves with others, letting go of pride, and abandoning obsession, we can attain calmness and peace of mind 
at any time. I frequently mention the problems of traditional culture and social issues in my videos, but I am proud that Japan has preserved this important teaching to this day. 3. The History of Zen in Japan Lastly, let's briefly talk about the history of Zen in Japan. It is said that Zen was introduced to Japan in the 13th century, during the early days of the Kamakura period when samurai started to rule Japan. Two monks who trained in China established two separate sects of Buddhism in Japan, called Rinzai-shu and Sōtō-shu. Rinzai-shu, which was first established, practiced Zen by asking questions and answering them while training Zazen. Sōtō-shu, which was established 30 years later, trained solely through Zazen. Several hundred years after the Edo period, the third Obakshu of Zen Buddhism was born, which combined the Zazen and chanting traditions. Currently, these are the three major Zen sects in Japan. Then finally, let's jump into today's main topic. Why did the samurai favor practicing Zen? As far as I have studied, I have found the following three reasons. One, it is a religion of self-reliance. Two, the practices weren't restricted by the rulers. Three, samurai were managers and politicians that needed a stable and clear mind. Samurais always rose to power based on their own strength and capabilities, hardly by family background or birth. In other words, for warriors like them who fight in a world where the strong strive and the weak die, a Buddhism sect that simply asked for help from God or Buddha did not suit their nature. Such sects of Buddhism were popular among lower rank commoners. Practical training to develop one's strength like Zen was what the samurai were looking for. Many of the new Buddhist sects that emerged from the Kamakura period were strictly suppressed from the Sengoku War era by Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. The rebellions were completely crushed by force, temples were burned, and their activities were greatly restricted. This is because armed priests and commoners who believed they can go to heaven if they followed the sect frequently revolted against the authorities. Zen, on the other hand, hardly suffered any restrictions. This is again because Zen does not have any scriptures, nor does it worship a certain god. Zen practitioners would never form a faction and start a riot. It was a useful teaching that did not get in the way of rulers, but rather helped them to train their own soldiers. Thus, even in the Edo period, Zen was incorporated into various cultures and was protected by the samurai. We tend to focus on the warrior aspect of the samurai, but we must not forget that there were also politicians and business managers. They needed to live as good examples to the people, as leaders of the nations and groups, and as the highest status in society. Samurai needed a stable and unclouded mind in order to always calmly make the right decisions and guide people correctly. For the samurai, simply asking God for guidance in the time of crisis and making decisions was not enough. Zen was the best way to acquire such a strong mentality. This is why the leaders of this world today also favor training in Zen. If you think there are other reasons why samurai and Japanese people liked Zen, or if you have a different reason why you like training in Zen, please share your thoughts in the comments. Then lastly, today's conclusion. Zen is one of the Buddhist sects that were originally born in the 6th century, in which the goal is to bring oneself closer to enlightenment by practicing Zazen sitting meditation. I personally believe that the ultimate purpose of Zen is to train the mind to always focus on three things, the present moment, where you are currently at, and oneself, so that we can live calmly and peacefully at all times. Zen is unique in how it is self-reliant, practical, and is aiming to reduce rather than increase. Zen was introduced to Japan in the 13th century, during the early days of the Kamakura period when samurai started to rule Japan. Today, there are three major Zen sects, Rinzai-shu, Sōtō-shu, and Obakushu. Samurai prefer training Zen because of the three following reasons. One, it is a religion of self-reliance. Two, the practices weren't restricted by the rulers. Three, samurai were managers and politicians that needed clear minds. 
We need to remember that samurai were not just warriors, but the leaders of Japan. And in order to train a stable and clear mind, Zen training was the best way. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards the way of the samurai, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. I might have not talked about this too much in my other videos, but you know, as you probably obviously recognized, I love Japanese traditional culture. Yep. Even though, again, I always talk a lot about social issues and such, yes, there are a lot of problems going on in Japan, and, and even within traditional cultures, sometimes there's well, not just sometimes, there's often a lot of problems going on within the organizations and systems and such. But still, the reason why I love Japanese traditional culture so much is exactly Zen. Is Zen is the reason why this concept, this beautiful philosophy is exactly the reason why I love the traditional cultures so much. And you might have noticed Yaido, tea ceremony, no theater maybe not that much, but Shakuhachi, the bamboo flute that I recently started, all related to Zen. And that's exactly the reason why I actually tried training in Kudo, the Japanese bow, and also Aikido as well, which are all related to Zen too. Unfortunately for Aikido and Kudo, because of my Reino sickness, because my thick, the sickness that I have, I couldn't continue training, but I still really, really love the art. And if I had an afterlife or a second life somewhere, I would be very, very happy to train in them. Yeah. And one thing, a lot of people ask me about the hanging scroll that I have here. This is actually my family treasure that uh, I actually had a calligraphy master that I know write this for me when we started our company, actually our business. But this re reads actually, Jinji wo tsukushite motte tenmei wo matsu, which means in my translation, there's multiple translations, different ways of understanding this, um, this um, idiom. But I always translate to do your best, and then nature will do the rest, basically. So do everything you can, and then just wait for your destiny. Yep. But this is exactly the three things I mentioned. You focus on the present right now, the right now, this moment. You also practice where you are in this moment, and also you, practice, uh, you focus on yourself. This phrase here, Jinji wo tsukushite tenmei wo matsu, is exactly what teaches you what these things are about. Yeah, and I personally feel this is a very important concept in Zen. And whenever I have something that I'm troubled with, or if I'm uh, struggling with something, I always come back to this phrase, Jinjo tsukushite tenmei o matsu.